Could, you know, if you're going to develop as a team, you've got to look at what the level of the opposition. Um, Scotland will be a test as well. Both teams are going to the finals in 2024. So, yeah, I think, you know, the, the way to challenge your players is to put them against better opposition. And that's what we've done in taking the choice of games that we have. Um, we will play nations in the Nations League, which are, you know, judged to be of a lower calibre of opposition than, than Romania. But even those games will be tough because they'll have an edge to us because I believe Romania are in League C now in, in the Nations League as well, although this qualification campaign, obviously, they've demonstrated that they're a higher level of team than that. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think the most important thing is to keep challenging the players and obviously try and get belief into the players because when you come to World Cup 2026, we'll have to come to places like Bucharest and Budapest and these types of, and you have to be ready to deal not only with the level of the opposition, but the stadium, the crowd, everything in the atmosphere in the stadium. Dre, congratulations, first of all, you won Northern Ireland's Player of the Year. What did that mean to you? Yeah, it means a lot on a personal note. You know, I, I know my family were very proud of me, you know, so, you know, it was a good thing to receive, especially when it was folded to by the fans. So, to see the recognition I'm receiving, you know, it's obviously nice. How do you see yourself as an international? Do you feel established within the group? You know, are you still, like, I know you're young, but when you look at your age and the start line of the Michael Scott kind of play tomorrow, you're going to be one of the older players, bizarrely. Yeah, you know, it's different maybe being a younger player and maybe having more caps than a lot of the other younger players. But, you know, even at club level, I'm a young player in my squad at the club level, but I still feel like an established, experienced player playing because we have a very young squad. So, you know, the more I, you know, with the experience I have, probably maybe having 10 or 12 caps under my belt, you know, you just have to try and help the players that maybe have less than that. And, you know, the players that are experienced in the squad, the likes of Paddy, Bailey, George, JT, people like that, Josh, you know, they just have to help the younger players in the game and, you know, keep on trying to improve us and push us on. And what do you see as the future for Northern Ireland football? You know, for the future, you know, for every Northern Ireland fan and player, you want to reach a major tournament, don't you? So, you know, that's what we need to push for. You know, we wanted to do it last campaign, but it didn't go our way, obviously. So, obviously, going into the Nations League and friendlies, we need to keep on building and, you know, trying to gain that identity that like you said and, you know, keep on trying to win games. How realistic is it for Northern Ireland fans to think we could be going to 2026 World Cup or is it more realistic to think we'll be at the 2028 Euros? I think you've got to be optimistic for both, really. You know, it depends on how games go. Obviously, closer to the time, you know, you never know what can happen. We might go on a run and not lose a game for 10 or 12 and go in with so much confidence that teams wouldn't want to play against us so you know it just depends you just need to keep on building with games and keep on trying to win games and if you do that you know there's no doubt you can go to both of them. Good man. Um, Mike, I just want to ask you, captain, who's the captain? I haven't decided yet. Okay. Uh, I have two questions for both of you. Uh, the first one is um, it was a surprise for you to see Romania unbeaten in this qualification and to qualify for the uh, European Championship uh, ahead of uh, Switzerland. And the second one is, uh, can you name at least three players uh, that you see important for Romania, the opponents uh, for tomorrow night? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll answer the... My pronunciation may not be great um, on the players' names, uh, but, uh, look, we've, we've, we've looked at R Romania closely. Um, we know that... It's, I think the fact that they finished above Switzerland is, is a really positive thing. So um, clearly to go 10 games unbeaten um, is, is never easy in any campaign. Obviously, we were in the same group in 2016 for the Euros. So we're aware of uh, you know, the quality that Romania have and did possess at that time. They were probably favoured to win the group that time, but we managed to win the group on, on that occasion. Um, but I think the key players are obviously Dragostein at Tottenham centre-back, Stanchu, who played against us way back in 2016, although he was a young player then, and also, you know, Puskas as a striker as well, Haji. So, you know, we, we, we've watched a lot of Romania um, in the build-up to this game. 
we know that they're a high energy team, a high pressing team. Um, so it'll be a good test for us. Yeah, I definitely think, especially with Switzerland in the group, like there's no doubt Switzerland's a top side. They have a lot of good players, so to see Romania finish above them was just a credit to them, really, to, you know, go 10 on beating. I think it shows that, you know, as a team they stuck together and, you know, they impressed, you know, their group they finished in top, you know, they, I think they beat Switzerland and Drew, maybe. So to see that finish on top of the group, I think it'll be good for the country to go to the Euros and, you know, enjoy that experience. Yeah, it's just the same as Mike. <laughs> <There's no laughs> yeah. We have watch. them written on our hands. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I don't really think I could pronounce the well, players. Well, we could but go Dimitrescu, Radicoyu, okay. <laughs> back to that era. Yeah. <laughs> no, I remember that team, but we played against that team in 94. Oh, yeah, we played 19 before World Cup 94 in Belfast. We won the game 2-0. Mr. Haji didn't stay on the pitch. <laughs> so, yeah, but Romania have always had great players, so we, we respect that. And uh, hopefully, um, you know, the preparation for Euro 2024 is good uh, after tomorrow night. <laughs> after you just analyzed Romania and uh, the squad of Romania and the players and the games that were before in the qualification campaign, do you think that Romania can be a surprise for the Euros that can go through the groups? Yeah, I think so. I, I, I think there's, a, a, you know, in, in, in the Euro groups, it's very, very tight. Um, in, in the finals, the key is to try not to be beaten in the first game is, is, is key. Um, but obviously with the third place, with some of the third place teams obviously able to progress, we benefited from that in, in 2016. And once you get to the knockout stage of the competition, I think anything is possible, as, as Wales showed in 2016 as a small nation. Um, but the biggest thing probably is, what is between now and, and uh, in Germany is for Romania to continue with the, the, the consistency of their results. We, we're here to uh, damage that and destroy that. So they're, they're coming into the game in, in a very positive way. Um, so you know, if they continue in that vein of form, they should go into the finals as, in an optimistic uh, uh, frame of mind. Thank you. Any more? Yes, sir. Uh, the presentation of the uh, website of, of the Romanian Football Federation, it's a uh, thing uh, you have in your team, uh, uh, players from uh, second and third league from England. Uh, it's a uh, difference of level between uh, this level from England and the level of uh, championship in football where we uh, were uh, playing our Rom Romanian team players, it uh, will be uh, will be feel on the in the game. Uh, this difference of uh, uh, competition level where they, where you are compared to England. Yeah, well, for example, uh, your player plays in second and third league from England. Yeah, but the Romanian players play in another. A uh, higher level than you, your. The Romanian players playing a higher yeah, yeah. level than us. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, you know that's what happens in a lot of international football. You come up against nations where you have players playing in the Premier League, you have players playing across Europe in the top leagues. So obviously, coming into that, you know, as a team, you've got to be well structured. And, you know, you've got to try and nullify the better players in the team. And obviously, if you do that and you you play well, you have a chance of getting a good result. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks very Thank much. you. Cheers. Thank you.